Last week, or this week, actually, I think it was, it was Monday, it might have been last Friday. It was just before the election. It was a day, a business day or two or three before the election. There was this article in the Financial Times about how all the big hedge funds were more in cash than ever in history, or maybe ever since 2008, one or the other. I don't remember which. And I read that article and I thought, and because uh, Louise and I, we, you know, we have some retirement funds set aside, thank God. Uh, you know, most Americans don't. I'm, I'm very fortunate. But uh, we had, uh, you know, about half of it in cash and about half of it in bond funds, in, you know, federal bonds. And I thought I should be selling these bond funds. If all these, you know, if, if, this, if, the, if all the insiders on Wall Street are getting out of bonds and they're getting out of the stock market and they're getting into cash, I should probably be doing that too. And I thought about it and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll wait. And uh, sure enough, you know, right after the election, the bond funds crashed. And uh, yesterday, uh, the Aiden forecast that I subscribe, Louise and I subscribe to this, uh, which is a, a sponsor for this program, I'll say right up front. And uh, but the Aiden forecast that came out yesterday was like, uh, you know, we can no longer justify holding bonds. And uh, so, you know, I sold all our bonds this morning and, you know, lost over a percent for the year um, because <laughs> because I was a little slow. But, you know, it's it, number one, I shouldn't have to be professionally managing my retirement. You know, Social Security should be enough. We, we all should have pensions. You know, we should and, and Social Security should be it. And we could do that in this country. Other countries do that. And, and, and number two, all bets are off right now with regard to the economy, although I, I firmly believe, and Shano and I were just talking about this, I, you know, he, he's expecting a crash. I'm, I'm actually, I don't know. I think it's entirely possible that Donald Trump is going to do the exact same thing Ronald Reagan did, which is pump the economy like crazy using debt. Ronald Reagan tripled the national debt. George W. Bush did the same thing. He doubled the national debt. And, and you know, and and doing it in a way that will actually stimulate the economy. In the case of George W. Bush, it was a war. It was two wars. It didn't stimulate the economy anywhere near as much as it would have had he, like, rebuilt our infrastructure. And Trump is actually right about that, but that's something Democrats have been saying forever. In fact, in the first year of the Obama administration, he was trying to get through a trillion-dollar uh, infrastructure bill, and Democrats have reintroduced it every year for eight years in Congress, and the Republicans have said no. It even passed the House of Representatives back in the first year of the of the of the Obama administration, and the Republicans in the, in the Senate said no. Now you could say the Republicans control the Senate. I think they've got 52 seats now, out of 100. But for the last eight years, they have required 60 votes for everything. And if the Democrats start requiring 60 votes for everything, then they could prevent Donald Trump from pulling a Ronald Reagan, where you stimulate the economy, but you do it with borrowed money, you jack up the national debt, and then as soon as the Democrat comes into office, you start screaming about the national debt. And by the way, this is not new and this is not a secret. Jude Wininsky wrote an op-ed about this back in the 70s in the Wall Street Journal, uh, call, he called it the two Santa Claus theory. He said the Democrats have always had the Santa Claus of Social Security and minimum wage and unionization and worker workplace protection and food stamps. And, you know, the Democrats are always giving people things, things that people want. And the Republicans are always saying, no, we can't afford that. And he said, so we've got to do two things. Number one, this is a two Santa Claus theory. Number one, we've got to come up with our own Santa Claus. And number two, we've got to force the Democrats to shoot Santa Claus, their Santa Claus. And Jude Wininsky, who is no longer with us, but back in the 70s, the Wall Street Journal proposed a, a, a plan that was picked up explicitly by the Reagan administration. This is how they ran. And I'm predicting they're going to do the exact same thing this in the next four years here. 
And that is, the two Santa Claus theory is, number one, the, 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 the Republican Santa Claus is tax cuts. They're, you know, they're going to pass a giant tax cut. Or they're going to try to. We'll see if the, if the Democrats filibuster it. You know, and people at the top will get a huge tax cut. People at the bottom will get a little tax cut. But everybody will get a tax cut. And so, you know, the president can say, as, as Reagan did and as Bush did, Hey, everybody got a tax cut. Isn't that wonderful? I'm Santa Claus. Of course, Bush's tax cut added over a trillion dollars to the deficit, but there was no mention of that. Do you remember any mention of the deficit during the eight years that George Bush was president? Those of you old enough to remember Reagan, do you remember any mention of the deficit as he tripled it? When he came into office, it was only $800 million. When he left office, it was about $2 trillion. I don't remember any, any mention of that. And I was paying attention. But the minute, the minute Bill Clinton hit the, hit the White House, uh, granted, that was four years later, George Herbert Walker Bush was in between, and he was raising the deficit too. Or the national debt, rather. And no discussion. The minute a Democrat walks into the White House, the two Santa Claus theory Start, you know, start screaming about the national debt. We can't afford this. We got to do this. You, you've got you've got to cut back on Social Security. And 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 they did the exact same thing in 2009 when President Obama became president, and he almost took the bait. You'll recall he actually said, "Oh well, yeah, okay, I'll go along with the uh, chain CPI." And you know who stopped him? Bernie Sanders. Bernie led the charge in the Senate to stop that. Or maybe it was in the House at that point in time. But no, I'm pretty sure it was the Senate. So I, I am seen, I am, you know, my, my spidey sense tells me that we're not going to see the crash that I've been predicting, at least not in the near future, although I could be completely wrong on this. Because I think that they're going to do this old rope-a-dope thing that, that Reagan did. We're going to see it all over again. Reagan, Reagan did have a short crash. He had the worst recession since the Great Depression. I think it was in 82. And, and you know, he, he spent his way out of it, which is the appropriate way to do it. You respond to those things with fiscal stimulus, not with monetary stimulus, which is what the Fed has been forced to do for the last eight years. So now if the federal government starts spending money, the Fed doesn't have to do all this kind of low, super low interest rates. So interest rates will go up, inflation will go up. So people on fixed incomes and whatnot who have money invested will actually start seeing a return on their investment. But the deficit will go up. But you're not going to hear Republicans talk about that because their Santa Claus is tax cuts and they're going to force Democrats to shoot their Santa Claus. So I'm just, that's, you know, my take on this. So what do we do? Don't let them, don't let them make it happen. Don't let them do it. If they present an infrastructure bill, for a trillion dollars for the infrastructure, which is what Donald Trump is pitching, and it's not paid for by raising taxes on rich people, or some some rational way of paying for it, then just say, hey, you know, you guys have said for the last eight years you you want things paid for. We're not gonna we're not gonna go for this. This is the Tom Hartman program. I'm I, with certain exceptions, I am in with the obstructionists. I think it's time to go to war.